Hello everyone! Today we make our Ritual 100 video channel update for the series What's up with Schwerpunkt and how is the channel faring and all this stuff and welcoming also the new subscribers. Um, we arrived to 800 video and specifically 2251 subscribers. Right? Um, there's been definitely an increase from three months ago and uh, there are lots of things we could discuss in this regard how the, the, the channel started growing in a, in a different way from the previous months and how this is a good sign but at the same time it's, it's still very moderate as you re realize you know for 800 videos normally there are channels that have millions and millions of, of views and we basically have analyzed also in the previous videos of this kind of this channel update what what are the most obvious reasons for these dynamics and how can the, the, the situation evolve here I see in total we had you know the, the world channel has something like 200,000 more than 200,000 views 29,000 hours of, um, of views and um, and this positive trend right that has kept growing um, that I was saying before in a different way because for the first time especially at the end of August began to happen something that uh, I hope would happen in uh, in a let's say very pragmatic sense uh, not much because this is in fact um, a natural or you know um, a fan driven dynamic you know about the famed YouTube algorithm that theoretically uh, it's um, it's basically out there in the way it should work uh, in in, uh, in practice as a combination of factors that I frankly didn't bother myself to to read because I don't even care you know that I make my videos with very specific and precise aims that have if you want very few to do actually with YouTube's uh, logic and even counterproductive way for the sake of subscriptions and even on views sometimes and um, but what I was saying is that uh, the you know the mechanism I mean the factors altogether that would bring this YouTube algorithm for which the the video you know is, is, is sent into this um, circuit for which is launched and lots of people start watching it so this is all artificial it's something that YouTube starts doing on, on the base of the parameters of w which videos to suggest um, and to make appear first among the the searches and so on and it, it fell over this pretty bad video that I made almost two years ago when you know the, the quality was dramatically lower than you know even compared to, to the one it has today it was a video on uh, King Gitz Khan and the Mongol Empire, right? It was one hour twenty-one. There was just one picture. I I spoke in a dramatically boring and slow and uh, you know disconnected way in in many ways. And this thing had not received in two well, let's say in one year and a half in August, um, but one hundred views, something like that. Well. In those days, I don't know why, the thing started rocketing to the stars, <laughs> let's say, for Schwerpunkt's standards, we could say it collected in a few days in a row, because the thing went on for, for like a week or so, something like mm, almost 3,000 views, right? That is not excessively much, but just a very few videos of mine are watched regularly, we will we'll talk about that because that is also strange because also in, in that case the quality is dramatically lower compared to the lots of other videos that I've done at this point are dramatically better and more interesting in general um, to show in fact that this the strange dynamics that take place on here so this video apparently had exactly nothing that uh, you know other videos had I don't know whether this thing because I thought uh, I'm looking at the statistics right now of this and we're it tells you, you know, where do these views come from. It turns out that it's that kind of mysterious, almost spooky voice that says, um, un, in, in the thing it says, indirect on or unknown source, right? It's kind of weird, you know, what 
the hell does it mean, right? Um, and it's pretty sibylline. And I've looked at the statistics of other, you know, also at the countries where it came from, from the, but it, it's obviously artificial. I mean, it has literally nothing to do with how much the video is being watched, right? This thing had a very flabble, uh, weak um, um, watch length and um, and and click right you know views and this thing simply rocketed so the question is why it happened I don't know right the hope is that it, it never n had never happened not even with the luckiest videos I, I put out there um, I don't know why it happened it, it's quite mysterious and objectively I think it resembles much what other youtubers uh, actually say about the YouTube algorithm that it doesn't seem to be correspond to something particularly um, you know, connected to the factors that YouTube says, you know, it's about this, right? And it's obvious that uh, you can mm, understand that, of course, successful videos are, uh, I mean, YouTube calibrates these algorithms, presumably with, you know, of course, an interest in the way for the same, for the same side, right? They want uh, the best, the most entertaining, let's put it in this way, videos to be paraded uh, to be shared and see so that people remain glued to the site they they watch the, the advertisement and so on but I presume that the the mechanism is of course being you know um, you know completely on its own completely automated it really also sucks in its within itself other videos like this one of mine that objectively have nothing special they actually suck um, the positive thing, though, for Schwerpunkt, and this is how it happened, is, is that I got um, a substantial amount of, of subscribers. Some of you are probably here because uh, you're my new ones. You know, in, in 90 days we had, 100 days we had uh, more than 500 uh, subscribers. Uh, so I should welcome you and, and thank you, of course, for f for the attention. I've seen it from the comments, and many people have come saying, "Okay, the, I found this channel recently. I've started following it." Like, I'm very pleased by that. I I, I thank you all in general. Uh, of course, uh, every single subscriber, even those that you know just bookmark the the channel, saying this could say something interesting. You know, you know it sucks, or you know I don't even like him. He's even antipathetic to me. To those subscribers followers that I know from from a long time and that I, I have acquired some familiarity with and that I thank particularly of course um, and more generally to the to the bulk right of people who watch they're also silent there are lots of people presumably as always I haven't checked now the, the analytics about this because this instrument um, here are very uh, important if you want they're very useful and uh, you could employ them strategically but you know it's um, it's largely un it, it, it's not profitable to, to try to calculate it in my opinion I'm, I'm too close of it at this point to believe in the thing but I mean a lot of people also follow the channel from the outside right from people who are not subscribers and that um, still watch and follow the channel from from the outside as I've been doing for for, for some years from some channels myself especially back in the day and so mm, this will thing could not be possible without your support in the sense that as you know I do this completely independently I haven't monetized the channel even though I could I could earn a bit few from that and frankly I'm not interested in this I mm, I just do this stuff because I like doing it and even if it's more like a duty right it has some lot of practical uh, benefits from especially from a psychologically stabilizing point of view right you know it's part of my routine it makes me learn a lot of stuff also of course Schwerpunkt changed a lot of my way of viewing my own job and uh, there are you know some updates I could also make about especially those videos in the Gnotis um, Auton or Easter and Easter Rain Easter Rain playlist um, that deal with you know with what is history about what is the connection with today's world you know that here I come in part to to tell the story to tell the tale of what you know people could be interested in more of that later in the sense that of course most people come on my channel but they don't quite realize 
what this is for and what are the videos supposed to to mean or represent right um, we will talk about that later but generally speaking I do this without many expectations like if it was just one of you out there I would do it as it was at the beginning by the way and I also do the thing my own way so I don't um, I don't contemplate interferences aside from the most obvious like you know if there is a complaint for something that objectively doesn't work that's fine but it's it's the the, the, the broader let's say the broadly strategical objective of what I'm doing independently from YouTube and, and all this you know connection you know followers subscriptions views etc watch length that I that I do this for that that is something that will take some time to explain and in general I think that the connection between what I do here and what I think it's important to say for reasons that are I can say beyond the historical point I make in the video about the single you know event or um, and its contextual relevance but properly you know as an activity for what, what history should be for for broadly meant right for for people all over the world in my opinion uh, I've discussed these things a lot once again it's plenty of videos of that type in this terrain playlist but it seems to me that I have clearer ideas about this now uh, than I had in the past or better I, I got to some, to some points that made me reflect about the, the the broader implications of just discussing certain topics you know that you know uh, I don't know frankly what's the main interest that brings people to watch Schwerpunkt um, I think it's most of it is essentially I, I discuss topics that are difficult to find sometimes um, some are you know fairly popular but you know the, the the cut I give to it of course it's somewhat different from whatever it's out there on YouTube like most youtubers uh, rightfully and you know cleverly uh, create contents that are exactly meeting with let's say YouTube's um, mechanism of this you know for, for the sake of of, uh, of course of views and of money for for making a living out of it and uh, I've never as we we're saying before I've never seen YouTube in these terms of course you know I were told uh, you know one day you will make so much you know fortune with this you know do it you know because you know uh, it's just about making videos of this kind but I'd say wow but uh, you know that could happen with with everything I still hope to win the, <laughs> the lottery at some point but in other ways I've already won it right you know I don't need to fortunately rely on these means to just live a normal life let's say and I and and that's also and somewhat even sadly the reason why I do this in the sense that I realize that most historical problems I complain about on, on the internet are connected exactly to this not everybody has the time or, or the energies or resources to, to simply lose time <laughs> the, the way I do to dedicate myself to uh, what I do for a living but also to this that are, is deeply intertwined because as you know in case you didn't know I, I'm actually a historian I don't like to be called like that because I, I try and this is one of the points of Schwerpunkt to, to tell you that you are a historian whoever you are and that all humans uh, share this common experience of trying and of research right and uh, try to understand what the world is about and that everything is history history doesn't leave in books or you know in, in a distant past or you know something that is detached from us history is literally what we live in we we all live in the past you know the time uh, the impulses you know from the sensorial impulses pass through the nerves and right to the brain to the processes them but we that time is already gone right and all we're doing is trying to realize what the hell is going on in the first place all around us and we approximate it in a way that naturally poses the, the properly the historical problems that we deal with and and these problems are very big in today's times right part of what I was hinting at before is exactly this that I think we have come to a moment uh, in history which uh, education will have to be redrawn nobody seems to be talking about this uh, in spite of the you know those stereotypical 
you know, things of, you know, the school is old, you know, which should be all, uh, should be all about, you know, each one's abilities and, you know, to, to, to leave people freer without discipline to do what the hell they, 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 they want to do. I can tell you, I've, I've been through all this, this path, you know, in all these years, and I can tell you that it's absolute nonsense. You know, there are, uh, actually, of course, there are things that do not work about the older ways of teaching, but it's not much in, in, the, in the methods, rather, um, you know, if, of course, if, you know, teachers suck, let's say, in school because maybe they're not paid enough or they, they're they just chosen through, you know, the, the debatable criteria um, and so on. It, it's one matter, uh, but generally speaking, it's it's about the contents. It's partly about the, the, the let's say, I, I believe strongly in, the, in things like discipline, in a lot of homeworking, in a lot of exercise, both theoretical and, and you know, a lot of theory and a lot of practice, right? If you take that out, you can form people that are brilliantly going to fit in the world uh, market, but that are absolutely passive from an individual point of view. They are fundamentally ignorant, like the, 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 the majority, the, the enormous majority of people out there. And there is nothing to do about it. it it's obvious, right? But seems things are changing also towards different directions in the sense that you know why do we need an educational re uh, reassessment and reform in many ways it's because we have uh, an inf a knowledge overflow right that has never happened historically in this way and it, it's something so microscopical and overwhelming and crushing and it's you know incredible nobody talks about that you know i i don't like conspiracy theories at all but i do believe that of course you know people will make broader strategical assessment make politics realize that this is a, an enormous deal and actually a field where we could you know even clever individualistic and interested people like myself right you know could um uh, dig a lot of gold from because um Nobody talks about it. it. It's a real problem. So the, there is this differential, right? This uh, uh, this new field of exploration that I think some somebody is, is pioneering, but in ways that I don't think are extremely, um, you know. Uh, of course, it's fine to be interested, um, and you know, that is at the base of you know intelligence and curiosity and uh, every kind of possible achievement, but it's still done, you know, in a way that resembles very much the market, you know, today, that is, you know, very small things at very short term, um, you know, length, and uh, time length, and that's it, so that let's cash safely immediately, but enough, you know, that there is no risk. Uh, and then let's simply go on at every time. I, I like long-term projects, you know, ask me, I've made 800 videos at this point, <laughs> I can tell you, it, it's sometimes it, it, it exhausting, right, especially in autumn, and this is restarting uh, in a few times, I, I feel, I, I felt in past years like, oh my god, I, I don't want to do <laughs> this video, I start becoming lazier. Then eventually, I, you know, I, I think it's a matter of, not a, of principle, maybe of character, I don't know, but I think it's still important. I think every time uh, I speak, I try to really to, to eliminate every barrier to make you fully understand why I think this is important. Because otherwise, I, I feel I would feel like I'm I'm failing badly. Um, I feel like I'm failing also when I look at the reasons why I'm sometimes or. Uh, you know, I'm followed by a consistent amount of people that objectively do not follow me because they understand anything about what I do, right, or why I do it. They just see the historical thing that they think it's their own, right? You know, oh, someone talks about whatever people, country, uh, nationality, religion, they, they simply subscribe and they say, oh, wow, this guy told talks a lot about it, so he must know, knows what, and, uh, you know, I, I simply support the, the fact that he speaks of this, even though, you know, they, they don't even maybe listen to it. And they would be, you know, sometimes even, you know, uh, uh, angered, I suspect, you know, if they, they knew properly what I'm doing this for. And I, it's not that I'm actually against but all the, the, the list of examples I made right now. It's just that, as you know, if you're a regular follower, I, I deal with them in a very... Um, 
peculiar way, and I say peculiar not because I want to sound like oh, I'm the special one that gets it, and, and the others don't, but objectively because I don't see it happening uh, in the in the media, right? In the media broadly meant, including YouTube, right? You know, it's talking about history in a you know com comprehensively um, complex, critical, and um, uh, I think both analytical and I know in English it doesn't exist as a term, but synthetical should probably be used, right? Not a synthetic fabric from, you know, chemicals or stuff. You know, if if there is analytical in, in a language, I presume there should be synthetical because what 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 are, you know, what does language and etymology exist for? By the way, so the, the term that I often use, and I know the, I found out that it doesn't exist in English, but uh, to have this constant dichotomy to go back and forth from, let's say, broader to smaller scale and to start building uh, as a consequence this uh, properly historical dimension right that I, I will not repeat myself on the issues of uh, hyper specialization or generalism that I have you know bothered you enough uh, with uh, by by now but you know properly you know speaking of that broader educational issues right you know I have this hope that the average person can start looking at history not as a matter of you know um, you know of subjectivistic opinion right not a field where the average no one can come up and say you know it's as I wished thing went like right um, in spite of all the obvious and dramatic difficulties that history poses in this regard and that you see actually are th these are the the double, uh, they are the faces of the same metal, right? Because it's paradoxically exactly from understanding the difficulties of history and the fact that it's, ex you know, it's extremely complicated to, to make an historical point that moral relativism has exactly nothing to do with that. You can't invent history. You can't, you know, uh, pre presume to, you know, to go to a specialist, to a scholar that has studied his or her own life a certain topic and pretend, uh, without even knowing the, the ontology, the methodology, you know, all the or what it takes properly to, to, to make history, which, again, it's something that everybody can do, right? I, I often even speak, uh, you know, I can't say against historiography because that would be too much, you know, but that there is a, you know, there is an imbalance between the, the reverence towards, uh, say the scholarship and the, the the broader and radical ignorance that that leaves reigns supreme over the masses that that should be fixed because a society where you know there is uh, just an elite that knows a lot and even that is debatable in the sense of hyper specialization has been ruining a lot of stuff here started again but once again you know and however the masses that ignored that that level even exists, right? This is the problem that is going on today, uh, and that that is a consequence of the knowledge over the information overflow, right? But it's still something that is increasing in absolute terms, in absolute and in, in relative terms, in a way we have never seen, right? And the danger posed by a person presuming essentially to 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 invent things the way he or she thinks they, they go just for comforting their you know their their feelings and, and emotions it it's, it's pro has probably nothing to do with history which is by definition should be by definition a rationalistic and anti dogmatic exercise by definition right and as you know we talk a lot about military history because that's if anything you know i am a medievalist but i like to be thought as as a military historian in without temporal boundaries right it is true that most of my um you know historical education has been spent about warfare from roughly uh, classical greece to napoleonic warfare mostly um, with a with a specific bias towards hellenism roman warfare and medieval warfare that is in fact what i study for for a living and this is a historical field that differently from many others has um actually a, a dimension on its own right many people think that the military art and history and strategic culture can be approached 
through a merely historical background. This is actually wrong. Right? There, is certain, there are certain specifics about that obviously pass through history in many ways, but a very specific forms of it that is concentrated on the analysis of campaigns, of battles, on the transformation of armaments, and all this stuff, and the on the military doctrines and so on that are not objectively very popularized. There are, there are people that, generally speaking, are in interested in warfare, right? And also part of the reason why probably the, 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 the I have the, this number of subscribers now is, is linked to that. Many of you probably like this thing, but as it happens to everybody that is not born <laughs> knowing this stuff, uh, maybe you, you think it's in a way um, and it's really not, right? And I and I sometimes hate to be contrarian all the time to to state that you know there, there, I don't want to sound as if there was this exoterical dimension for which you know I keep this, this treasure here and I try to to eventually every day uh, you know show a coin of it and uh, pretending to 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 be you know who, know, who knows whom for this actually. The, 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 the thing is very complex in itself. I mostly explain it if you're really interested, and I know you aren't because the views are dramatically low. Um, I explain it in the von Clausewitz von Kriege series, right? That is possibly the single most important thing I do on Schwerpunkt because the rest is largely like, at this point, it's mostly manualistic uh, history from Middle Ages or the Roman history plus some you know interesting um, you know spearheads in, uh, in some aspects of, of, of military history that we are dealing with in detail but you know if you really want to have a sound military education you should be starting objectively from the Clausewitz in theory not uh, reading articles online or or hearsay or what your cousin thinks about it that that's not how it works you know if you want to do a favor to yourself, pick the uh, the Fonkrieger, possibly in German, if if not, find a good translation, start studying it, which doesn't mean, you know, you pick your book and read it in, you know, in the breaks or whatever, it means you, s you, you close yourself into your room without any single type of destruction, you start studying it for, you know, a couple of years of your life, right, that means studying something, right, because otherwise reading will lead nowhere, right, this is a great problem, and, um, I actually like to be brutal with this, you know, my, my phraseologies sometimes are a bit too uh, chewed at this point, I use uh, this hyperboles to be, you know, linguistical hyperboles sometimes to, to be more incisive, but I truly mean this, right, you know, we, we should enter into the mindset that, it, in, in, as in everything in life, if you don't spit blood on something, you can't do anything, you can't be no one, and this is the true point of reality. It's not, it's a very Jungian concept after all. It's, it's not even based measurable on the amount of success, you know, things of how much you earn or there's n none of that, right? It's probably about how capable you are to regenerate your, your mind over time, right? If you, if you arrived to, to a point in your life in which you presume, ah, finally I am confident enough, I know all I have to know, like I can't go out there that's a declaration of failure, of you know, individual essential failure, right? There is nothing worse for a human mind to, to presume that they, they got it, right? Um, and I, I'm leaving my journey myself, right? I, I, I change my mind, of the, you know, I must say not that often. It's not a good, and it's not a good sign, I would say, but uh, at least I like to, to learn a lot of new stuff. And I feel, I feel you know, maybe I don't rationalize it, but of course I do change mine, right? I do shape the, you know, uh, it's not even about the, the, the sheer amount of knowledge, it's properly about that the depth of perspective we were talking about before. Um, and the phone Krieg is, is, a, is the first step you, you must take. The second step is starting studying like crazy, and I stress this, uh, campaigns and battles. Once again, not by, you know, disclosing books that, you know, tell you about the battle in synthesis or magazines or all this stuff that, you know, is flourishing like, you know, it's popping up like mushrooms everywhere because, you know, 
it's designed for uh, for us millennials, right? We we play too much war video games. Uh, a wide chunk of us is actually you know a, a, you know kind of a retarded uh, mass of ethno nationalistic pigs. Uh, that do not see anything but you know a massive and disorderly bath of blood for you no know, for you know, any kind of racial or other idiotic ideological reason. Um, it's uh, a it's because properly most of people of, of, of this generation objectively does it doesn't do not know much about history aside from that right and, and aside and aside actually from YouTube from from some things that have a very specific uh, target. That is exactly that one. Just, just always know that wherever you go in your life, whichever thing you are offered is exactly designed to, let's say, to I can say simply to get your money at the point, but it's designed on on your type of mind to to give that other person money, right? And I'm not doing this because, as you realize, I'm not trying to spill money uh, from anyone, but I I'm trying to make people more aware in the hope that all these kind of intellectual deficiencies that, that people regularly have, right, uh, at this point, uh, could one day be surpassed, right? There is nothing worse of, you know, having built, I would say, your, uh, your, your understanding of the world on a non-scientific base, right? That this is properly the, the problem here, right? As I was saying before, take sources, and start studying them, right? If you want to study military history, uh, read studies, of course, read history, or you can read um, scholarly work, because that cannot but happen. But just never think for even a single time in your life that you can't do that without studying the sources, because as long as you, you don't, uh, you don't study sources, you will never understand what the hell those people are talking about. And therefore, your your time, money, so it will have been worthless. And th that's exactly how people take away money from you. And you're the perfect target, right? You're extremely easy to target, um, and especially to recognize. As another thing that Schwerpunkt uh, told me is to to see if even just from one comment or one phrase, it's w what's behind that. You know, what what's the essentially emotionalistic side of the story? Because an intelligent, informed, rationale. Uh, comment is always to 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 evidence itself, right? And it it it's, it expresses all of these qualities from, from itself. It doesn't need any other help, right? The rest, the, the overwhelming majority, and I'm sorry for this, right? Because of course I'm referring also to a part of my followers, but that's exactly the point. You know, if you follow Schwerpunkt, you should be aware of the fact that this channel has literally nothing to do with any other thing uh, you have ever seen on here, right? Uh, the, the, there are, um, you know, for, for better and for worse, right? For worse, largely for me, because what I do is, I don't think it's of dramatically uh, qualitative nature, right? I, I do this every day with my uh, a pretty large, uh, you know, availability of, of information, I must say, uh, from scientific works, I have my own competences and so on, but uh, at the same time uh, the, the point I'm trying to do here is that you should use your own brain, right? Y it's not a matter of thinking that, uh, you know, it, it's a matter of empowering you, right? Many people today are telling everybody, oh, you're so valuable because you're your opinion should be valid, even if it's not, you know, this great much, you know, it's important because it's you, because you're special. Well. Unfortunately, this is not the truth. The large, the, the overwhelming majority of people in this world is not special at all, right? It's turning out into you know very miserable existence in some ways. It's not going to achieve a great deal, right? It's going to cause problems to other people. It's going to, you know, transmit also these faults to others. Um, it's always been like that historically speaking, and. Um, the only difference is that I believe, of course, that every person has the possibility to do otherwise and that's why I stigmatize this kind of mindset because it's there was probably nothing deterministic in it right if it was not you know just a statistical experience that we know things happen like that but that's exactly the point things could change right and making a change is after all all what we are here for in a way and another and I, I don't think Schwerpunkt will ever make this this great change but uh, as I said also in previous video I mean channels update you know there have been 
people, for example, who have, who have wrote, written me and said, you know what, I began to study at university because of you. Uh, I began to get interested in this stuff. And I don't know what, this, uh, to, to me, it was very touching. It happened a few times, actually. And it's not, but the, the only thing, as we were saying before, if, even if it had happened just once, right, I've met amazing people here. But people have made me gifts. Right, historical gifts, very precious ones. I, I was overwhelmed. I must say, I'm, I can be pretty cold and harsh sometimes. But actually, I'm a very sensitive person, and and I, I was deeply struck by by such, um, you know, expressions. Let's put it in this way, and I, uh, I think that uh, maybe this this thing can help. Right, I, as I have also countlessly said. Uh, a lot of times, I'm not speaking from the above, from the ex cathedra, let's say. Um, I would like to speak, uh, not even a monk, but let's say uh, individual, right? After all, the way you follow me, it's uh, listening to me talk. <laughs> I think it's extremely boring. <laughs> I would never do it um, myself, but even at least, you know, someone does. And, uh, and it's obvious that what I'm trying to tell you is like, um, you know, um, as an advice, right? I, I tell you these things not because I necessarily can, uh, you know, uh, teach you something, right? I believe the w one of the most beautiful things of history is that everybody has something to learn from someone else, right? Of course, with enormous, <laughs> you know, disproportions, quantitatively speaking, and also qualitatively, but. Um, it, it's always a mutual exchange, right? Um, and and therefore I I do this just like a you know like a memento, right? Just know that there are these problems that we cannot leave pretending that after all uh, there is a, a moment which uh, uh, to which we arrive in which we are accomplished in the in the proper sense, right? There is not a uh, an ending line. Right, knowledge is something extremely powerful and dangerous in itself. Knowledge is dangerous. It is definitely true. Right, um, there is something about it that is dramatically powerful and that requires an enormous responsibility to, uh, in order to, to to handle it. And this is something that properly calls for discipline. Right, and and. And something that is not the free, happy, you know, pastime or hobby, but it's something that properly connects you with some of the most serious political and social issues, right? And this is what I would like, also from you know, in, in the near future, if it will be possible to to analyze a bit more in depth. That is, you know, how important this contact is. Right, many people think that history is, you know, the the popular vulgata is properly, uh, you know, a field in which you you can be the expert that can, um, uh, you know, isolate in him or herself in 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 the magic world of, of wisdom and knowledge, etc., without often realizing that the history is never concluded in itself or better that you know history in this regard is should be an activity it's not a field like another right it's not a matter of learning how to play an instrument learn how to do music that is dramatically beautiful and requires a lot of discipline and so on but it's after all an exercise that goes towards a specific direction history is not flattering you in the sense that it you know just tells you to how to do something and just r requires a, a discipline to be attained. History is something that crushes you, punches you, that destroys basically everything you, you thought you believed. And most beyond the reason why that, that history is always more, you know, um, you know, hysterically uh, torn apart by, you know, by people who want to, to possess it, to make it a personal property that nobody can touch, right? You know, that nobody can criticize is properly design of the, the enormous uh, 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 lack of, of awareness about history itself. It's about the fact that there is no stable ground in history, that you can't uh, 
start from an assumption and pretending that reality will respond to it, right? Because none of us know what the hell the truth is in this world. We all know that there is a truth, at least, you know, some people believe there is no truth. At that point, it's very complicated, actually, to, to lead, a, if anything, a, a psychologically healthy life uh, without that assumption. And I know that this is a very deep and controversial philosophical assumption in turn, but you know, I, I will not explain now why I think it is the case. I just think that I would never be a historian if I thought that there was no truth, right? But uh, I also would never be a historian if I thought that, you know, you can't get that truth, right, with the, the, the poor gnosiological means at our disposal, right? You can grow closer to it, though, right? And this is what, in fact, most people do not care about. I, I often discuss history with very different people, uh, okay, not maybe so many, because I uh, actually don't, don't even care at some point. It's even difficult to find someone who can discuss history with that, you know, you can't have, in fact, a, a serious historical discussion with. And this is a problem that I get sometimes, even from the same YouTube, right? Not because I discuss with people on YouTube, but, but because I objectively see... I will have to explain you how I'm, I'm dealing with comments at this point, because that's also a serious issue. Because you have to stem at some point the certain stuff that, you know, people would obstinately say, doesn't matter what you try to explain to them, right? I've actually never wanted to convince anybody in my life, right? You know, if I, uh, here it gets to another point of, of Schwerpunkt in itself, that it is very important for you, right? Because I have no problem about it since the very beginning of, of the channel, but you should sh surely be aware of it, right? Uh, it's the idea that what I speak uh, of here uh, is is of course well, first of all a lot of different things so everything I say is debatable right is subject to criticism because all knowledge is right and this is also a very important starting point but at the same time uh, and that's where you understand I'm not a moral relativist everything you say on the scale of, you know between the unknown and the truth has a value on its own. So the same reason why people's opinions overall are never equal, right? Will never be equal, fortunately, right? Uh, nobody's opinion will be uh, as important as the one of another person. And we should be very thankful about it. Secondly, though, what I discuss in here is, uh, say, let's skip the most obvious thing that is usually sourced, right? That I obviously add a lot of my uh, you know my impressions I have definitely my own my own subjectivity to the uh, in approaching certain historical issues right I could say easily uh, we are all biased uh, and this is also true but you know th there is one point about this that I what I say it's not driven by a motivation that eludes from the historical interest in the, in the matter, right? So if I say something that you think, maybe you have never heard, you know, it's very hard to to break through, you know, some, you know, somebody's mind if, you know, you come up with something that the person has never heard, right? This often happens. I've seen it for example, I stopped sharing uh, videos on Facebook because I said at this point, you know, first of all, I don't have time for a number of reasons, etc. But I, that's something I used to. But you, you have an idea how much you can understand it about the approach, about the difficulty, or even of, you know, of presenting. And if we're not not that people people dramatic, it, it's absolutely strange how I rarely get criticized. You know, you, 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 I would think, you know, all the time you start speaking about something, you, you would get a, an over, overwhelming amount of, of, of criticism, of, uh, you know, of, of all kind, positive, negative alike, but it doesn't seem to be the case. So this in part, you know, satisfies me because I say, you know, maybe I don't have confused you, <laughs> right? Or maybe you, you tacitly agree or disagree, right? So... But at least the the point is that what I present it's maybe worth listening to, and uh, and apparently you do it. I see it from the analytics. There is someone who listens to this stuff for, for days, right? So I I can't um, days in a row. I mean in terms of, you know watch length. And the point here is 
understanding, of course, that everything I say is not said just to, you know, for some for pleasing someone, right? There, there's a lot of historical, uh, you know, talk outside. I can say an overwhelming one. I think, objectively, if you look at YouTube, the, the most famous, um, let's say, um, YouTubers about historical matters, it's topics similar to this, like military history and so on, are usually and not surprisingly in this sense, rationale and mm, anti-dogmatic people, right? They, they like to be critical, to be refined, to, to say something that is spot on because it's based on evidence and something you can check and verify. Right? But the sad thing that happens is naturally a lot of people that follow them do not properly understand this, right? They, they do it for some mechanism that honestly I haven't quite understood Right, this is valid also for for Schwerpunkt. It's valid for every channel in many ways. But that is, you know, I follow this person, but I will still fundamentally. Uh, I mean, uh, but my question is, how can you follow a person that you don't even listen to? Right, this happened many times. I realized from from certain comments that people, you know, just don't even watch the video, do not understand the points I make. Right, it's true that I talk for hours in a row, so it's definitely not an easy content to digest, but like, you know, if I speak about something precisely throughout the whole video in a certain matter, pointing that out and substantiating it with evidence and making it a point and connecting it with with a, a broader philosophy to which I do this, that includes method and, you know, of course, evidence, as we were saying, sourcing, but properly also introducing, especially for what concerns the history of warfare, military logic, that is what is you should be able to to develop over a certain time. You, you have been studying the, the history and the art of warfare, and, and that's why I said before that most people do not do that. They, they think it's just quoting a bunch of stuff, and then you, you know about the thing. That's not history. I'm sorry, right? History is not made like that. We don't do it like that since the, the, the 16th century, right? Um, you can't lag 500 years behind, you know, historiography. You have to understand that if you quote something, you should understand in the first place why, what you're quoting it, to, to understand the context, to understand what it properly means, uh, to have a, an enormous amount of, uh, you know, concerting, let's say, evidence that properly uh, places what you're quoting as an actual historical reality. Right, not quoting something because it's written in a book you found, and you pretend that that's the truth of you know wh whatever was the, the 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 thing, and and pretending that you have made a, an historical analysis. It doesn't work like that, right? Most people see history like this, objectively speaking. Um, there is um, probably a format of sometimes it's it's based on on myth, uh, debunking, uh, rhetoric. Uh, rhetorics, right? There's been a, a lot of this, especially ever since I can remember, like as a kid, as a child of the 90s. Um, you know, it, a bit uh, in disclosure, but also just in documentaries and in uh, the the way that the way no, you know, history is usually presented to to the broader public. That objectively just an attitude, right? It doesn't present any method, that doesn't present ever any evidence because people are properly not used to work with evidence, with sources. That's the crucial point, right? And I'm sorry for that, because if you don't have time to, to study sources, I'm sorry, but that's where you remain, right? I also don't have time to, I don't know, to, to study engineering, right? And I know that I don't know anything about it. Um, but, of course, I can base myself on, you know, some engineering study or things like these, that you must know such aspects sometimes if you want to study history, because it's, history is a bit of everything, really. Um, but specifically speaking, you cannot presume there to, to be something that you are not, right? And it's not about, uh, you know, because I think that me or other people are someone in that regard. It's exactly because you pretended to be someone about the thing that it is wrong. Because it's about projecting yourself into a sphere that in which you are, you know, uh, revered or you know uh, accepted or whatever. It, it's not about the historical point. Nobody cares. I personally dislike exhibitionism. Actually, uh, I, I can't, still can't believe that I've put 
here, uh, you know, thousands of hours of myself speaking because I'm an extremely reserved person telling the truth. And you know that I, I rarely talk about myself and I actually never done it in, uh, aside from what, you know, concerns properly the historical uh, dimension of what, what I do in here and also explain maybe because I got interested in this stuff and like I'm doing now to trying to, to explain why I do this specific way I, try, I decided to start this this thing and I don't know where it will lead me right I, I don't know whether this is going to, to me up, up to now it's been a failure right um, overall right for me I mean in absolute terms right from the merely let's say uh, YouTube side of the story it's been a failure Come on, I was saying at the beginning, 800 videos for 2,200 subscribers is not a lot, right? Maybe connected to algorithm, maybe connected to the f thing that, you know, I speak a kind of a broken English and uh, the, the video quality is what it is and uh, there is really, it's really not a booming content for which, you know, everybody wants to, to pay. So, uh, personally, I felt very enriched by this experience and I would be sad to stop it. As I was saying before, it helps me in a way. Um, and it, it made me, you know, it made me understand even in there the difference between, you know, of course I have some books, I read them, but, you know, up, up to the point when I when I actually have to explain the stuff to people, it's that I present, I, I pose myself certain problems that otherwise I would have never thought to, to deal with, right? And that's what made me grow about this. So that's why I'm so interested in what I do in many ways. It's unfortunately not about you, <laughs> I must say. You know, I have... Um, I am, uh, as I was saying before, I'm actually, I'm actually very old, I, I like uh, all of you, I can't say people, I, even those people who write kind of uh, idiotic stuff, you know, I, I like that you write idiotic stuff, because it, it helps me, <laughs> you know, it's not really in a utilitaristic sense, but it's um, because I, I at least see that there is someone that cares about history. Right, that there is something that, you know, maybe if you listen to other, you know, 30 seconds, sometimes it's just, you know, there are people that stop to the first minutes, comment, I make a two hours video, what for? You know, for you for stopping in the beginning, um, you know, maybe they can't get to a point saying, huh, maybe, like, maybe I, I, I don't, you don't have to trust me, right, but at least you have, maybe, to listen to that stuff, you, you say, wow, this is interesting, I never thought about this, and you, go search for other stuff autonomously it is to be your work not mine right you will you will never learn something more through me right it's about through your own curiosity through your own intelligence right i'm just like a a medium in many ways i i rarely even speak about things that i actually do right uh, as a historical leaving let's say uh, because uh, maybe that's not so important but i I, I'm very convinced that all of this is worth it exactly because it can stimulate someone to, to start a research that is a history on his or her own. And I'm very positive about this can't happen, right? You know, for all these hours that my videos have been what people have, you know, th there's been a quantifiable, uh, quantifiable impact in some ways that can be, could even be measured ideally, right? To say, you know, maybe the the things I've put out here will help uh, just to fall back on the content and say, you know, maybe I've heard that same thing and uh, I want to deepen a bit well, what is that he was referencing to, what is that those other details we was talking about. And um, naturally my content has evolved over time, right? It's obvious that now I'm more efficient in the way I, I, I express myself, I, I get more to the point, I'm capable of more sophisticated explanation, but um, I try also to keep it relatively simple, knowing that it is not, right? That's the advice that I wanted to give you actually at the beginning, that everything I say in a single video is not just my rant or because, you know, I connect in here because I want to, I don't know, vent from my day or stuff. When I sit here and start talking about it, whatever it is, um, I, I'm trying to really make a point, right? This is what I am sadly disappointed by sometimes because I realize that most people I don't I don't know what it is that they listen to apparently and I know I because sometimes I, I from the same content I, I realize they do arrive to, to, to one point of the video but still they haven't understood what the point is, right and it, it is true that the point should be understood in uh, you know 
only at the end of the video I like to describe the medias like as if there was a circle right you know that is started to be drawn at the beginning and close itself towards at the end actually the structure of video structure is not built specifically like that but objectively yes there is like at least a fil rouge that connects the wall content so yes in in practice you should you know, it's I can't say you, you can't understand what you listen up you know, if you don't listen up to the end. But um just beware that chances are that not just I explain maybe some issue that, that I'm referring to, but also that I've made eight hundred videos by this point, right? And and that I often talk about the same things or at least the same topics and in different ways, of course. Uh, no video is equal to another, but um, that there is also another way of referencing. Like you know, if you listen to someone, and I, I realize this is not university. This is not you're not obliged. You're not uh, making an examination. Just listen to, to this to, to a random video of mine. You you don't you you don't even know who I am at the beginning. So you can't know all this stuff. What I see it like, what I what I do it for, whatever. But just know. Just be aware that, like, I've been doing a lot of stuff on here that, you know, chances are that, that maybe will will tell part of what maybe you are searching for and you would like to know better, right? And it's difficult, even in here, to, uh, to acknowledge. I always say that there's plenty of... I, I make... Every video is inserted in a playlist, right? And there are lots of them. There are tens of them. So... If you are interested in specific topics, you will find these videos grouped on the base of them. So the point is, I would say, you know, it, it's frustrating for someone to ha to make a point after having, for example, made other videos and not, you know, being taken into consideration at that point. And maybe even there's not a lot of criticism, but it happened. Someone said things that you know were evidently uninformed, and that I actually, you know discussed in the video kind of at length and in depth and that are connected with lots of other stuff that I connect that I discussed uh, equally on the same topic and this is what I'm doing Schwerpunkt for what what do I do 800 videos for exactly right it's not because I want to make a lot of them I want to uh, it, this is part of a structure there is all a um, uh, a selection that I make of the and a general plan of the contents I make, and I can tell you that it's obvious difficult to to see from the above the whole thing because you're not in my mind. But uh, these 800 videos, in my the way I see it, it have not even began to scratch at the surface of what I'm, what I would like, at least ideally, theoretically, to to discuss in the end. Right? Um, it's begun only from some month now that. That videos get, uh, Schwerpunkt videos get, uh, you know, um, let's say proposed, suggested by YouTube in a more uh, systematic fashion regarding, you know, specific topics that are discussed in multiple videos at a time. That should help, right? Now, uh, you should be aware that that's a way you can find a lot of other stuff. Maybe you didn't even, even know what's there, right? So, this is very important to me, and I, and I tell you just as a guideline. It's not that I tell what what you want to do, but you know the point is that I'm not a machine. So when I interact with with you in this regard, and you want to interact with me, just be aware that, of course, it's, you're talking with someone who has put a lot of other information out there for you to watch, to listen to, actually, and that's the whole point of why I do it. Right, it's not presenting you the the thought of the day, and then you know passing to the next one. No, no, it's all connected, right? And it does work specifically like that. And I realize it's at the beginning. You know, it's normal. You you don't realize it, but I take these the chance of these channel updates to to explain you more specifically what the whole thing is about. Right, the same goes for comments. Uh, this is a kind of a bitter note. Already in the last channel update, I told you that I would be stricter with um, comments because naturally there's been a lot of uh, 
As I was saying before, I, I don't receive actually much criticism at all, right? Most of the comments are assertive uh, and or maybe critical. But yeah, there is a lot of thing about the technical side of, you know, of my videos that, you know, in terms of audio and uh, and mostly audio, actually. But And I understand that those are useful. Actually, you should be posting them because so that I understand also how you, you receive this, this content and it's important to me. But for what concerns specifically the historical side of the story, it's obvious that there are lots of comments that do not work, right? And uh, my policy on SharePoint is that theoretically, you you know, everything is 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 good, right? Uh, I don't hide those comments that I don't want to be seen because, for example, oh no, someone you know discovered that I made this mistake. I don't want to. no. If you you know, look at all the various videos I make, you know, if someone points out and I made a mistake, I said, thanks, right, and I will correct it, you know, ne by next time I will, I will be aware of that, thanks, you know, and, and because if I make a mistake, why shouldn't I recognize it, you know, wh why should you trust me, why, why um, would I do this in the first place, what kind of history am I making, right, if the comment is critical in the sense that it starts touching certain uh, for example, political questions, right? Just to make the most banal example, I made a video on the medieval Jewry. Some, I don't remember, it was one year, more than one year ago. And I said, I know that I make videos about the Middle Ages, the role of people that confuse the Middle Ages for, you know, fairy tales uh, about their ideal world and other stuff. And most of these people are, generally speaking, you know, maybe ethno nationalists. Uh, I would talk even about, you know, uh, leftists, right, you know, I don't mind, but I, I can't do, to talk about history, most people that care about history a bit more in depth are t tend to be on the conservative side, and of course I'm happy, you know, I'm fully open to conservatives and liberals, but I'm definitely not open to alt riders and leftists, um, and this is to be very clear, you know, there are subscribers that are Evidently, I don't know. Uh, I have. Uh, I've seen there are. There's a communist. There's a socialist, and I'm fine with that, right? You know, if you just want to follow the comment and appreciate, what, what's wrong with that, right? I disagree with you politically. I don't. I don't. I don't mind. We shouldn't mind because history should be a, a place where we should all bring our best together and say, in terms of objectivity, and have a dialogue about it, right? So, there is no discrimination of that kind. But on the video on the medieval Jews, it, the first thing I said, I, I'm, I'm sure that over 1,000 subscribers, there is surely the anti-Semitic one that will pop out of this video. And in fact, so it happened. Of course, I blocked the comment. Why? Because it was anti-Semitic, because it was racist, because it was idiotic, because the video was, of course, a normal uh, uh, history video about medieval Jewry as we studied them at university. And there's, I personally never studied it because usually, I mean, it's not so frequent, but uh, I had it in my books. I, I, I like to think uh, I made only a video about that. Surely in the future I will make more. But um, I knew the thing will happen, right? I, I know what are the hot topics, what are the sensible topics. And I'm a person who talks about war, about religion, uh, about politics as well, right? It's, it's obvious that in my historical content, you know, er, we must be aware of the fact that every historical content is political by definition. Right, and I will promise I will spend more time to explain to you what I mean by this, but it should be evident, right? And that is not to say that I condone political propaganda in history. As you understand, that's exactly the criterion I use to, to, to block people, or at least to, you know, to to hide those comments that uh, uh, basically the person comments uh, comments and there is this system on, on, on YouTube that, you know, if there are certain words that you you know, pre there, there is um, already a, an automatic filter by YouTube itself that even understands, you know, how, how it works, but you can also insert certain words that if they are used, you, you know, the, the comment is automatically blocked and you can eventually accept it or not. Well, at that point, uh, I've seen a lot of bad comments, right? Uh, once again, not against me or against the channel, but things like, you know, very serious stuff, right, that you wouldn't like to hear. Um, from from lots of political standpoints, right? Um, not just political. I mean, political broadly meant. 
and um, you know if they're very offensive like if there are, there are offensive there are a lot of people who become crazy like you know when you make those videos about the migration you know there, there is always they didn't the, 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 you know the, uh, at no I don't know you have to say the conspiracy you know fantasy history you know there are specific countries if you if you if you wander around YouTube about bit of historical videos especially the ones of well I can't say which one <laughs> specifically but um, there is always the, the guys that think no my, my my people was in this land before you and yeah you know what I'm talking about and this ferocious hatred and um, in that case you know if there is an aggressive offensive language I, I block uh, if there is not I just but what is said is still kind of bad I I I, I don't have it show right otherwise there are comments that are actually uh, that I disagree with that even are correcting myself uh, are correcting me you know saying this is not true right and things that are evidently true <laughs> actually you know I just said that the truth does not exist but in terms of historical reality if I say things like um, I don't know uh, I can't make a specific example but uh, you know let's presume that uh, someone said that the art is flat well I will not block the comment because I think it's already stupid by itself and someone presumably will come there maybe there, there is a an interesting dialogue and I confess that <laughs> there are also certain videos in which I left uh, you know even some you know to pushed comment there just for for people to, to to fight on it and increase the views and it, I know it's kind of uh, sick in this regard but but at least they are you know they're at equal level stupidity <laughs> just they can't fight each other it's too funny very objectively and uh, yeah that's maybe unpleasant for some but it's still like we know that these people exist so actually I've learned to that I can't censor like all the things that I presume cause trouble or the Actually, it will arrive one the point at which I will neither have have the time to to check all the comments, right? So that's obviously something that will will not, uh, you know, at some point will not be controllable. But there are I'm very strict for what concerns instead other um, other questions, and I, I maybe I should, mm, you know, standardize a bit more my 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 I don't know my interventions I don't know how to put that but if, if at, at least if there is anything that you want me to for example to delete or you know just you can't just contact me and I will see it hopefully then at some point I will not uh, I don't know how that's how it works now for what concerns instead where's Schwerpunkt going with this well I don't know because I don't know what my life also will be about. Uh, I I want to continue this. Like I see it as a, of course, the, one of the advantages of doing this stuff on YouTube is that the thing remains on. Like it's not on Facebook that you know old stuff is never. You know this thing can is lost. Let's say or it's there but nobody watches it. This things can, as we have seen with the Mongol Empire video. You know they, they can magically pop up once again um, surprisingly and uh, people will keep watching them but my intention is of course to continue making these videos why not after all there is a lot of stuff that uh, is worth doing this for um, it's just I don't know whether up to this point like it's almost three years that I began and basically two years that I started this doing this daily right um, and the results are not so promising I know that I should insist because I don't as I was I, I, I don't quit usually I, I like this desperate and extremely expand you know expansive uh, energetically expansive in your enterprises I do it in a even in a stubborn way and, and I like it right I've never liked I, I've always liked to fight against the odds I've always um, seen the wolf thing in my in my perspective not in the immediate result so I hope that at some point this thing will grow and the statistics in this sense are not so bad because the watch length of course is longer also because my videos are longer so maybe it's not such a huge achievement that is kind of double the, the, the YouTube standards but it, like maybe even for the length of my videos is, is not even a great thing 
proportionally. But what impressed me is that um, YouTube tells you fundamentally how many people are exposed to your video. That means essentially how many times your videos, either in the, the you know in the suggested videos column or whatever on the in on YouTube's home etc., are seen, and the percentage of people who click on them. And if you combine that also with the number of people who subscribe and that remain on the channel, right? That's I think it's a very good achievement because it turns out that people tend to click, to appreciate, and to save, you know, the channel by bookmarking it in the subscription. And the thing goes on and it's pretty stable, right? It, it hasn't had dramatic swings. It's not that you know. Uh, also, the the, the the content is pretty homogeneously viewed and um, you know. Uh, the, the, there is a steady growth, of course, simply because, you know, if anything, I still increasing the number of the videos, so the growth is, is normal, after all. Um, and I've registered, naturally, in, in the last, chiefly in the last month, uh, a steady growth, right? You know, in, in January, I, uh, I mean, an acceleration proper. In January, I, uh, I reached 1,000 subscribers in uh, almost two years of video making. And at this point, I'm 2200. Now, it's not dramatic growth, but as you understand, it has accelerated pretty much, right? Um, it's gone faster th than ever in many ways. So I hope that it will keep growing in this sense. And who knows uh, about it? We will, we will see whether it's, um, you know, it's really a, a winning strategy. Because actually, there is a strategy behind this all. Like, I knew perfectly well at the beginning. I mean, at the beginning, I, I didn't know, ex I, I just, I admit I was curious that I wanted to see how how the statistic worked, right? Just to more or less and try to, to make a, a project on some statistical evidence, right? And um, this is all planned. Like, I, as I was saying before, to me, I, I've not even properly began to talk about the stuff that, that I want to hear. So uh, this is actually a very long-term thing. And it's normal that at the beginning it takes time, right? I don't. I never thought this would take off immediately. I knew it would be very gradual. That I immediately realized what the mechanism, broadly speaking, is. But I suspect at one point we will hit the critical mass, like with that single um, Mongol history video, and uh, let it happen like uh, another couple of times, and we can start having important numbers. Right, and these ones are, uh, are 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 nice. As I was saying before, I lose a very few subscribers over time. Uh, the, the this is important because I must confess that some topics I discuss, like every time I make a video, generally speaking, I think I'm too, um, like too controversial, too self-assertive to excessive in some ways, you know, that I, at least my sensitivity should be avoided because I don't like to sound too, I can say too passionate. I mean, you can't even see where, I, where I'm passionate about, but let's say I, I would like to sound colder, right? And I know I have to, to show part of, uh, of me in, in the process because otherwise you wouldn't sympathize even with what, with what I'm doing. I don't have to be too mechanical in what I do, but let's say Every time I make these videos, I say, you know, there's something about what I just talked about that I could phrase better, that I maybe was too exaggerate about in term. In, if anything, it's a matter of, of emphasis in the way I express myself. If I am too, uh, in fact, too too harsh sometimes, too polemical, that that's what I would like to to avoid. But uh, so I. I I, I wait for the reaction usually, and, and I must say that the reaction is overwhelmingly positive. Like, uh, I don't know if it is because people don't care, because maybe they're affectionate, they, they pass, you know, over the thing. But, um, you know, I, I, I see people, generally speaking, my followers sympathizing, right? which I probably would fed up myself, <laughs> right? If I were, as I was saying before, I, would, I probably wouldn't like myself, right? I, I know that I... At this point, I, I, I understand maybe what, what is it that you like about this all, but uh, I would like it to be more something of something more scientific, as I was saying before, right? Not, not just because maybe I 
I don't know, you appreciate maybe that I make videos every day so that you... Yeah, it's a form of reliability after all. I, I do this also for it. I can't conceive like that tomorrow I will not do it. Of course, if there is some important reason, I will, I will not. But, and nothing will happen, of course. But I, I, I do care about it. I do care about the spirit of it. I do care about the fact that there is a plan, that there is a, a vision of history that we want to express in here that is something universal. Right, I, I try to, to, to make Schwerpunkt really for, for everybody, but in a in a non uh, you know without trying to to fool anyone, without trying to to uh, let's say to promise something that I will not do. I'm pretty harsh, right? I'm pretty critical. And I I don't care whether and people do, do not seem I mean they seem to appreciate it after all. And I'm not entirely sure about it because nobody is vocal about this. Nobody is saying, right, you know, you're just a spoiled brat. I, I hate you. You're disgusting. You're stupid. You're sick. You know, there is this general, I maybe, you know, I get criticized about something I say here and there. But, as I was saying before, it's a very light form of criticism. It's like mostly about historical detail. There's no, it's not colored. It's not loaded with uh, bitterness. It's you know, it, that, that's strange to me. I thought I would meet a lot more backlash for things I say the way I say it. Right, and I won't, I won't be explaining here what I'm talking about, because after all, you know, this video is like our channel updates, like our, uh, a drop in the water, right, for I, I do them every 100. So, you mostly listen to me for things I, I actually discuss historically, so I feel this was important to point out. For the rest, I didn't know where this thing will go, right? Because I hope that, of course, subscribers will increase, which is a way that puts, you know, that puts a discipline on me, right? Sometimes, I don't know, maybe sometimes it has even a negative effect because I feel like uh, that, uh, you know, I don't even perceive the, the fact that I'm talking to all these numbers, right? And it would be very different if I saw your... Uh, just in front of me, even if you were just 50 people, right, as you listen to me, you know, I think normally to every video at this point, but it, it would be very different. Um, but I don't know where it will go, right? Uh, it may as well happen that one day we'll be obliged to stop for some other reason. The, the, the videos will remain, hopefully, but maybe, I don't know, for some time we'll have to stop. I don't know, I don't see it coming, but, you know, we can never tell. Um, just know that I don't have the intention of uh, and valid motive now for. Um, and so at one point, uh, it, it's also about you, you see, because uh, this whole thing could, could evolve into something interesting, right? I often discuss about even silly stuff, like one day, you know, I've always been obsessed about making a historical movie. I don't know about you. Uh, uh, it's something that has always passioned me. I, I like uh, cinema and uh, generally speaking, I've always dreamt of making, uh, you know, something artistical about war, right? Not like fictions to make today, which they want to just replicate the video game effect and hype for us millennials, right? And that's how they, they sell even cheap stuff that is that is not even well done, historically speaking. Uh, I'm actually, like, I love properly, histor like, um, the artistical quality. Of a, of a movie. There are beautiful historical movies that are beautiful because they are artistical, right? not because they are historical. Or maybe it's both things, but primarily because they're well done as movies, not because they, they talk about that certain... Specific. And and that's a bit the same philosophy that I try to, to, to transmit on Schwerpunkt, that here, it doesn't matter what I talk about, but also in the way I discuss it, right? You know, uh, as I was saying before, I, I'm aware that many of you come here because maybe I talk about the history of your own country or you're interested, you know, in, in a specific topic and then you start following me. But, and as I was saying before, I, I absolutely uh, love to see that there are people from uh, literally all over the world that follow the channel. And, I'm, and I like every, uh, each and, and every one of you in this regard, but just know that I absolutely do not do with this to flatter wherever you, you know, come from, say. 
I like the history of of all countries, of all cultures, of of all over all the world, right? I have no, of course, I have, you know, I know more about certain uh, certain things that are rather than others. But just just know that my objective here is not to parade or to make propaganda or to exalt or to idealize whatever. If you have come here for that, just know that this is not the right channel for you. Right, and I suggest you to, to get away from here as 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 quickly as possible because uh, when you will realize it, you you probably be disappointed. Right, so just always be aware of that. And this has nothing to do with the actual affection that I do have, even for certain countries, their history, and, and how simply with me it works like this. That as you know, as soon as I know something, I like that. Right, this is the beauty of history. Right, and that. That is a pretty good indicator uh, to see how much people actually know, because people were obsessed about a single country, usually their own. Generally speaking, not only they do not know anything about the rest, and they, they show that, but by definition, without knowing the history of the rest, they do not know anything, utterly anything, about the history of their own country. Because their country, without the rest of the world, does not exist historically. So. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people who think otherwise, and that's exactly the kind of people that I hope to to piss off and that they will get out of here. Um, but and, and that's why I care about this consistent core that has been forming now of subscribers that actually accepts the channel the way it is. Maybe you perfectly know that uh, this is not perfect. This is not particularly refined or sophisticated in the, um, in entertainmental terms, and that's exactly the point. This channel is not meant to, to entertain, it's meant to uh, maybe entertain from a historical point of view, but not in the sense that, ah, now I will watch the thing, it will be, you know, so you will ha you have to applicate your mind to it, you have to understand, you have to reason, you have to listen to it, and that's difficult. That's not the average YouTube call. Right, it's not even remotely conceived to be like that, to be entertaining. Right, I, I sometimes also got, um, you know, uh, struck by these attitudes. I've seen, for example, I remember in June, I made that video on the Battle of Bouvines. Right, that you know is, you know, I, I don't think I have to present it. Just look at the battle, but I shared it on, on Facebook. Right. There was a guy, it was nice, I don't know, he was a... Uh, he seemed like an, an old person, he, he was evidently interested in history. Um, and he said, wow, like, I, I, if you know what, what I, I make, um, you know, battle videos like, right? I, I make a tactical history of the battle on the base of the sources and it's something fairly complicated. Battle of Bovine is also a big thing, it's well, well documented, so it's... Actually, it was like a two hours and a half video, and it's ultra compressed because to make the whole work take uh, weeks, right? In studying all the single sources, etc. So you tell me two hours and a half to make a battle moving to me, it's a joke. Like you know, it's hi hyper synthesis of something that would deserve much larger space. And these are the problems that uh, that concern me and that buzz in my mind. And th this guy comes up and says, "Wow, nice battle." Right, you know, nice battle, first of all, to the Battle of Bouvines, like, you know, this was said like, you know, as if I had discovered the battle and I wanted to, to tell it to others, right? To me, the Battle of Bouvines is uh, a matter of, it's like a pillar of, the, you know, the history of mankind. If, if, if you don't, you, you do leave knowing what the Battle of Bouvines is and its magnitude, right? Um, by definition, in every field, it's not just about the military or the thing, all it is mostly about the international political consequences, the, the affirmation of the feudal system with the, the emergence, the, the, the cons definitive consolidation of Kingdom of France as the first power in Europe, the, all of the, the, the enormous consequences of the world thing. The guy says, wow, nice battle, but here, and he posts a, a video uh, on the comment of... Uh, like the battle of Bouvines made, I don't know, by one of these mega ultra, you know, cool channels. Like I don't know what it's, like, it's the kings of and generals, and these things that talk about warfare, etc. It, it was like, um, like I don't know, ten minutes long, right? I must confess, for the curiosity, I clicked on it, and uh, it was like seven minutes of 
preparation to the battle in terms of mostly political and strategical things and like three minutes of battle <laughs> right i made two hours and a half just trying to, to give a decent explanation of what what happened in the battlefield and base of sources and the guy says you know but you know maybe it's too referring to my own video says maybe it's too long this video this one of uh, 10 minutes uh, is more accessible right and maybe people would be more interested in seeing that and th I didn't answer to the guy because he was generally nice I presume he was he was just trying to give me an advice and uh, and I accepted so it was not a problem but that's exactly the problem I have generally speaking with popular culture today that I would say people do not even think of the existence of a military historical analysis on a, you know, like it could be a university class of a couple of hours to explain in detail something. So something that people can wrap their mind around and think uh, about and study and get references and, you know, understanding the, all the deep historical nuisances of, just for the reconstruction, all the complications, the incongruences and so on, that everything has become about the entertainmental side of it. I mean, if 20, th this, this thing went fast, right, it, it escalated very fast, right, if 20 years ago someone had told you, look, there is someone who speaks for about the Battle of Bouvines, in detail about the, on, only about the tactical thing though it was not even about the context of the political the most important thing it was just about the tactical analysis for two hours and a half people 20 years ago would have, would have said many may, may have not been interested but they would have said wow this is something like you know you can't listen to it for free it's there and um, you know, it probably says something that that is valid, right? For speaking for two hours and a half, maybe, I don't know, you listen to the video, maybe, maybe it sucks, I don't know what your standards are, but at least I, you know, use some source, use some, you know, criticism, some, you know, something that you don't find in those entertainment videos, right? And today, the question is not saying, wow, you freaking did the thing, no, look, there is this other thing that is just 10 minutes long, and maybe people are more interested in that. Yes, and exactly, it's exactly because there is just that thing 10 minutes long that I do a two hours and a half video, because of all the stuff that, that 10 minutes long video does not say. Right? And, and there is an absolute difference between the two things. There is an absolute value difference in value between the two things so it's not because I made that video There's, someone can easily come about and make it two hours and help it a five hours video is way better than I than my own or that is capable of explaining it even more in depth is cool it, my own was not so in depth as I was saying before because to me for that battle you have to make actually multiple videos about that length to actually get to solidly to the point of all the f sources recollected to me, two hours and a half for Bovini is a brutal synthesis. The guy says, th the guy doesn't even see the point anymore. This is what scares me. Because this is, I think, what society is slowly turning into. And I do not want to live uh, in, a, in a situation like this. So the reason why I make this video is exactly to show people that there is a beyond. Right, not just about the Battle of Bovin, but about whatever they think politics, war, or society is really about. Right, that's why I, from one, uh, one year and a half, I'm reading, translating, and commenting the von Krieger on war, uh, because once again, on on the internet, I haven't I haven't found anything like that, and the work is dramatically important, and people do not even know what it is. Um, and so on and so on and of lots of aspects now I can't singularly comment for that I will leave you to the rest of the videos but that are dramatically important and that are also dr equally and dram dramatically neglected and 
until you don't get to the historical point, you don't understand why this is so serious. You will say, well, but you know, there are more important things. No, no. This is exactly the point. The point is history. Because if you're not capable of making history on these topics, what kind of history are you capable of making in the reality that you live? Do you think that the reality that you live, you, you, you do know it because you live in it? Uh, these are the kind of challenges I present. Not because I can give you the positivistic explanation of the story. You know that I do, do not touch specifically that. But I still try to make a, a pragmatic thing. That is to say, let's see what we can do about it and see if it works. Right? Because other channels also make historical and more, you know, generally speaking, they're morally relativistic. I've seen a lot of people also comment political stuff that, you know, try, you know, to challenge every belief because that's, you know, how how can you world, uh, live in a world in which you systematically challenge every belief of, okay, but then you don't actually express a critical judgment to say maybe, yes, there is a, a divide we can create, there, there is a dis uh, uh, a discrimen, right? There is a properly a, a a concrete difference in certain things too, right? In my opinion, there is a lot of moral disorientation. There is a lot of ignorance, and, and this is unfortunately the truth. And it's not about ignorance used as as an insult. It's properly about not knowing, and that's very serious. And especially today's world works on this, right? You know, fake news, for example exist not as a kind of dirty marketing option. You know, there are entire international policies that are carried out through that and they pay billions, right, on your skins. Mo for most people it's just a matter of wh whatever country you like because of hearsay, right? The reality is that people make billions on your skins and people die for for that amount of money, because surprise, surprise, human life on this earth at least has a cost, and it's pretty naive to pretend to live in a world where everything is, you know, now we know it, we know ever less in relative terms about our own world, and this is very, very, very risky, and this is the reason why you make this stuff. And that's why I care uh, that there is a following here because. If I if this is the reason why you follow me, well, I think we are in full synchrony. And I still haven't expressed myself about the whole thing because I haven't even, even barely touched you know these issues in contemporary matters. But I mostly make history of you know the Middle Ages of the ancient world, right? But do do not ever think that what you can learn historically from from this as an activity of research does not have a consequence in a pretty deep one in today's world because this is exactly what makes the difference today and it's real power right it's not name so when you think that history is after all not worth being spent a lot of money for because you don't make money with it right only with economics you improve the world, right? Uh, I am a capitalist and I'm absolutely fine with business, with economy, you know. But there is not just that, right? Or better, there is all because the world can be read all in an in economical fashion. And that's exactly the point. This thing does make the actual difference economically, too. Alright, so for today's stop here, I could add a lot of stuff and whatever, uh, but uh, I think I will stop it here, but then we'll address this topic sooner or later in some other video. And I hope that you enjoyed this one, that uh, if you did, please share it. Uh, and, uh, well, okay, let's not make me s finish this one like all the others, because it's, uh, after all, 1 in 100. I, I just want to thank you for all the support, for all the subscriptions, all the watch length and, and, and everything. Uh, to uh, to the valorous, a few words are satisfactory, so I will leave you just with that. I, I do trust you.
and I just hope you will have a terrific time. Everything is going well to you, even if things are really not going well at this moment for many people, but uh, that's what we can definitely wish to each other, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.